Dibbik. In Jewish mythology, a Dibbik is a malicious possessing spirit believed to be the dislocated soul of a dead person. It supposedly leaves the host body once it has accomplished its goal, sometimes after being exorcised. In Jewish folklore and popular belief an evil spirit which enters into a living person, cleaves to his soul, causes mental illness, talks through his mouth, and represents a separate and alien personality is called a Dibbik. The term appears neither in Talmudic literature nor in the Kabbalah, where this phenomenon is always called, evil spirit. In Talmudic literature it is sometimes called Ruad Tezazit. In the New Testament, unclean spirit. The term was introduced into literature only in the 17th century from the spoken language of German and Polish Jews. It is an abbreviation of Dibbik mi Ruah Ra'a, a cleavage of an evil spirit, or Dibbik min ha heisenim, Dibbik from the outside, which is found in man. The act of attachment of the spirit to the body became the name of the spirit itself. However, the verb devak, cleave, is found throughout Kabbalistic literature where it denotes the relations between the evil spirit and the body. Mid Dabeket Bo, it cleaves itself to him. Stories about Dibbukam are common in the time of the Second Temple and the Talmudic periods, particularly in the Gospels. They are not as prominent in medieval literature. At first, the Dibbuk was considered to be a devil or a demon which entered the body of a sick person. Later, an explanation common among other peoples was added. Namely that some of the Dibbukam are the spirits of dead persons who were not laid to rest and thus became demons. This idea, also common in medieval Christianity, combined with the doctrine of asterisk Gilgal, transmigration of the soul, in the 16th century and became widespread and accepted by large segments of the Jewish population, together with the belief in Dibbukam. They were generally considered to be souls which, on account of the enormity of their sins, were not even allowed to transmigrate and as denuded spirits. They sought refuge in the bodies of living persons. The entry of a Dibbik into a person was a sign of his having committed a secret sin which opened a door for the Dibbik. A combination of beliefs current in the non-Jewish environment and popular Jewish beliefs influenced by the Kabbalah form these conceptions. The Kabbalistic literature of Luria's disciples contains many stories and protocols about the exorcism of Dibbukam. Numerous manuscripts present detailed instructions on how to exorcise them. The power to exorcise Dibbukam was given to Baalei Shem or accomplished Hasidim. They exorcised the Dibbuk from the body which was bound by it and simultaneously redeemed the soul by providing a tikkun, restoration, for him, either by transmigration or by causing the Dibbuk to enter hell. Moses Asterisk Cordovero defined the Dibbuk as an evil pregnancy. From 1560 several detailed reports in Hebrew and Yiddish on the deeds of Dibbukam and their testimonies about themselves were preserved and published. A wealth of material on actual stories of Dibbukam is gathered in Samuel Vital Sha'ar Ha Gilgalim, in Chaim Asterisk Vital Sefer Ha Hezonit, in Nishmat Chaim by Manasseh Ben Israel, Book 3, Chs. 10 and 14, in Minhat Eliyahu, Chs. 4 and 5, by Elijah Ha Cohen of Smyrna, and in Minhat Yehuda by Judah Moses Fetya of Baghdad. 1933, pp. 41 59. The latter exorcised Asterisk Shabbatai Zevi and his prophet Nathan of Gaza, who appeared as Dibbukam in the bodies of men and women in Baghdad in 1903. Special booklets on the exorcisms of famous spirits, which took place in Koritz, have also been published, end of 17th century in Yiddish, in Nikolsburg. 1696, 1743, in Detmold, 1743, and in Stolowitz, 1848. The last protocol of this kind, published in Jerusalem in 1904, concerns a dibbuk which entered the body of a woman and was exorcised by Ben Zion Hazan. The phenomena connected with the beliefs in and the stories about dibbukam usually had their factual background in cases of hysteria and sometimes even in manifestations of schizophrenia. User with this ability either is or can transform into a Dibbuk, a malicious wandering spirit that causes harm and destruction to the living. They commonly possess a living person to accomplish a goal through them acting as a vessel. Many tales tell that Dibbuks were once sinners, demons, or a soul that's purpose was unfulfilled, so it inhabits another body to complete it. Their representation is diverse around fiction and Jewish folklore.
Once the soul of the deceased becomes a divic, their soul becomes dark and twisted, eventually becoming demonic. The divic, Jewish mythology. Power, ability. The power to possess the traits of or be a divic. Variation of undead. Spirit and demon. Also called. Demonic spirit. Divic spirit. Malicious spirit mimicry. Wandering spirit. The divic, dibok, is a very malicious spirit from Jewish folklore that can become so evil that it leaves much thinking, is this a demon or ghost? This evil entity comes from Jewish mythology. The divic is usually male, and in early biblical and Talmudic accounts are called ruchim, meaning spirits, in Hebrew. In the 16th century, it was becoming known as dibuks, which translates to clinging spirit, in Yiddish. What is a dibik, and what causes a dibik possession? Accounts of why a dibik possesses a living person, living being tend to vary widely, but here we list all the possible reasons. Version 1 The dislocated soul has done evil deeds and suffered, carrot, as a result. Carrot, means that the entity was cut off from God for these evil deeds done during their life. Version 2 This possessing spirit is thought to be a dislocated soul of a dead person seeking to take life back or finish a particular goal by force. The Dybbuk will cling and adhere to the living being host with some accounts stating that this spirit will leave the possessed victim after its work is complete if the aim is to complete unfinished business. Some Dybbuk may be helped and will exit the host body afterward. Version 3 In some cases, the entity is more confused than evil. What can be possessed? A divic must possess a living being, varying from a blade of grass, an animal, with a human being the preferred vessel, target. Women are often the most susceptible to a neglected mezuzah, or merely a less spiritual home. The opposite of the divic is the iber, a noble ancestor spirit who possesses the host vessel. The iber will always ask permission before possessing the living being. Another version is the magid which is not an ancestor but a righteous spirit who may possess permission. How to get rid of a dibic? Getting rid of the dibic can be done through exorcism, which will release the possessing spirit from the host and free this soul from its wandering. Most basic exorcisms require a pious man who is sometimes assisted by a magid or an angel. Some reports claim an exorcism must be performed in the presence of a minyan, a group of usually ten male Jewish adults, or at a synagogue. Sometimes, both are required. The exorcism will start with the interview of the dibik. This interview is done to learn why the dibik is still wandering and will help figure out how to convince the dibik to leave. If the dibik's name can be determined, that would allow the person to conduct the ritual to command the dibik. After the interview is complete, the next and final stage is the Dybbuk exorcism. The exorcist will hold an empty flask and a white candle. He will then chant, recite a formulaic adjuration asking the Dybbuk its name if not already discovered in the Dybbuk interview. The Dybbuk is then commanded to leave the person afflicted and fill the flask. The dislocated soul will then enter into the flask causing the flask to glow red. The red glow confirms a successful exorcism. Medical diagnoses claim that Dybbuk possession is the result of a hysterical syndrome. True story, Dybbuk box eBay listing. In this case, a 103-year-old grandmother left behind a Dybbuk box in an estate sale. She initially brought with her this haunted object after leaving Poland while the Nazis then occupied it before her immigration to the United States. This haunted box then comes into the possession of an antique dealer and future owner, Kevin Manis, in Portland, Oregon. Manis, mother suffered a stroke on the same day he gave her the evil box as a birthday present, Halloween, October 31, 2001. Manis opened the box and found two 1920s pennies, a lock of blonde hair bound with cord, a lock of black, brown hair bound with cord, a small statue engraved with the Hebrew word, Shalom a small golden wine goblet, one dried rosebud, and a single candle holder with four octopus-shaped legs. After this series of bad luck from the evil spirit, Manis quickly lists the item on eBay as a haunted wine cabinet or haunted wine box.
The box is bought for $140 by a college student, Ayasif Nitsky, in Missouri, who also falls victim to the mysterious misfortunes attached to the box after opening the box. He then sells the box for double what he paid to a curator, Jason Haxton, at the Truman State University Museum. This curator wrote a book containing his bad luck accounts, which were then published in a piece featured in the Los Angeles Times. Jason Haxton later became credited as a production consultant to The Possession, 2012, film. The film The Possession is slightly different from other demon possession movies. Every owner of the box has reported that the box smells of cat urine or jasmine flowers, and they have all suffered nightmares involving an old hag accompany the box. Media and popular culture Movies The Possession, 2012, Sam Raimi produced is a horror film based on the true story, based on the Dybbuk box, a ceremonial wine cabinet used to contain the Dybbuk. The Unborn, 2009 Directed, written by David S. Goyer about a Dybbuk attaches itself to a young woman. TV Rugrats episodes titled, Monster in the Garage, and, Toys in the Attic. The Whisper Season 1 Episode 9 titled, Broken Child. Paranormal Witness Season 2, Episode 4 titled, The Dybbuk Box. Deadly Possessions, Ghost Adventure Spin-Off TV Series, Season 1 Episode 1 titled, Robert the Doll, The Dybbuk Box Rapper Post Malone visited Ghost Adventures host Zach Baggins' S. Haunted Museum in Las Vegas in June 2018, where after he experienced a series of bad luck. Dybbuk Stories from Film and TV Jewish horror certainly isn't new. The Dybbuk, a play by S. Ansky about the Jewish folkloric demon, was first performed in 1920. Since, there have been many stories of the mythological nightmare, from stage to screen and otherwise. The Dybbuk is named for the word, to cleave, or, to cling, referencing the demon's way of latching onto a living body. It's a soul of a dead person that takes up a living host, possessing them until it is able to accomplish its goal. Unlike Christian demons we're used to seeing in films, Dybbuks aren't cohorts of the devil, but souls of the dead who are unable or unwilling to move on due to unfinished business. Movies like The Unborn, 2009, The Possession, 2012, and Ezra, 2017, used the Dybbuk, but each fell into a common trap. We won't spend time tackling the 2003-created Dybbuk box, but suffice it to say that film adaptations that used it were leaning on a bit of a modern ruse rather than ancient lore. Now, in a post-the-vigil world, Jewish horror has again begun to lean on Jewish folklore, and Gabriel Beer Gislason's attachment has given us a new Dybbuk story with the scent of the old world. Inspired by this beautiful film's use of Jewish folklore and mysticism, here are five Dybbuk stories worth checking out. Attachment. Shudder, AMC+. Of course, we should start with the inspiration. Attachment, which recently landed on Shudder, is a tale of two women in love struggling to fit into each other's lives. After a fast and furious love connection, Maha, Josephine Park, follows Leah, Ellie Kendrick, back to her London flat that's part of a duplex shared with her mother, Chana, Sophie Grabal. There, Maha witnesses what seems like religious fanaticism turned into mental illness where Chana is constantly and meticulously controlling Leah's space using amulets, potions, and obsessive organization. Getting hints from Leah's uncle, Lev, David Densick, Maha tries to grasp the strange happenings and to rescue Leah before her mother harms her. But as the mystery progresses, it becomes less clear who the real danger is, Chana seeming to believe that Leah might be hosting another soul. This special movie leans heavily onto ancient Jewish mystic practices and demonology to tell a stunning tale of love, fear, and possession. Staying close to the folkloric roots, it makes for an exciting adaptation of fear and what it might push a religious person to do to handle it. Demon. Roku, Tubi, Canopy. With shades of S. Ensky's infamous play, Marching Rona's Demon Centers on a Possession at a Jewish Wedding. This Polish feature from 2015 tells the story of a groom, Peter, Italy to Ron, possessed on his wedding night by the soul of a bride who was buried near his home. Demon is a rich story that leans on Ensky's play, about a bride being possessed by her would-be groom 
to create an allegory about the Polish and Jewish relations before and after the Second World War. Historically, dibuks were a common scapegoat for many illnesses, particularly mental illness. In this story, a doctor and a priest disagree about Peter's ailment, and it's the Jewish teacher who suspects he is being tormented by a dibuk. Demon is a stunning horror story that captures all the messiness of a possession at a grand affair and uses ancient lore and early Jewish horror texts to create something magical. A Serious Man, VOD Joel and Ethan Cohen's story of a physics teacher's series of unfortunate events is mostly a pitch-black comedy leaning on Jewish culture for its themes. While the Cohen's allege the film's opening scene has no bearing on the rest of the story, it suggests a Jewish curse might be following Larry, Michael Stolbarg. In a spooky prologue set in a 19th-century shtetl, a man is convinced he spent time with a chum named Reb. His wife is less convinced, knowing Reb to have passed long before insisting the man he saw was a dibbik. It's not certain what they encountered when a seemingly living Reb comes by their home for some soup, but the unfazed woman plunges a sharp object into his chest and happily sets evil on its way. Not spending much time with the dibbik lore, the greater film focuses on stumbling through faith for comfort in trying times and this story of a Jewish curse sets the stage. Possessions, HBO Max this French and Hebrew language series is more murder mystery than Demon Haunt. Reminiscent of Ensky's play in Demon, this story starts with a tragedy at a wedding. Natalie, Nadia Tereshkovich, has just been wed to Iran, Imri Bitten, and is about to cut the cake to celebrate their union. Before the knife has a chance to slice the confection, the lights go out, and turn back on to reveal Iran has been stabbed to death with it. Of course, Natalie looks guilty. But with her insistence of her innocence, the story turns into an investigation into who really killed Iran and what might be behind Natalie's perplexing behavior. The secrets of this six-episode HBO Max thriller are best kept, but by leaning on weddings, mysterious happenings, denial of violent behavior, and Jewish superstition, possessions, I mean, really, the title alone, is dusted in dibic themes. Though nothing like the exorcism of Emily Rose in style, the stories share the method of pitting folklore and rituals to remove a curse up against the rational world's desire for a scientific explanation. Intentionally blending the two, Possessions gets to have a murder mystery soul attached to a supernatural story's body. Difficult People, Hulu Billy Eichner and Julie Klausner's ride this comedy series often highlights their Jewish roots, including when Billy's character visits his brother who lives orthodox. In the third season episode, Code Change, Billy is summoned by his sister-in-law Rukel, Jackie Hoffman, when she suspects she might have a dibuk in her house. Though dibuks aren't particularly known to haunt homes like a lost poltergeist, the show's writers probably leaned on the comedic theory that words with the sounds, ku, are funny and wanted to use that piece of Yiddish lore for the bit. This theory is completely evidenced by how funny it is when Billy keeps repeating, dibuk, as he argues with Rukel about what is really making the clanging sounds in her basement. The reason this whole gag works is because it allows the show to take Billy's version of Judaism and bring it to his brother's orthodox house, showing the different versions of the religion and ethnicity that all exist within his family. Then it has a big laugh when Billy is forced to gather a minyan and create a sure fireway to exorcise the demon from his brother and sister-in-law's home. Spirit possession is a great example of our relationship to forces beyond the human world. Three common examples are jinns in Islam. Dibuks in Jewish mythology, and demon possession in Christianity. All three speak to our desire to understand evil in the world, and socio-cultural forces still in play today. Join us as we look at the history of spirit possession, exorcism, and their place in culture and society today. Spirit possession is the belief in external forces, malevolent or benevolent, taking over a body or object. Possession is a fascinating phenomenon that speaks to our deep attraction to the supernatural world. Spirit possession seems like it happened to people in a faraway time and place, and while we like to think that we are more secular and less superstitious today, over 80% of Americans and 58% of Canadians still believe in an afterlife and heaven. Furthermore, 57% of Americans and 47% of Canadians still believe in ghosts and spirits. So while we might not be sitting our butts down in pews, which is also a complicated question, 
we are still invested in the supernatural and spirit world. In Jewish folklore there exists a malicious spirit called a dibek. The dibek is believed to be the wandering soul of a dead person, that comes to possess living hosts. Dibek is Yiddish for clay. The belief in dibbuks really began in the late 16th century in Eastern Europe, alongside the rise in Jewish mysticism, although possession stories date back to the Hebrew Bible. What dibbuks are is debated. Some believe that they are family members whose souls remain in limbo. Some claim that dibbuks are spirits who have escaped from Gehenna, the Jewish equivalent to hell or purgatory. Others claim that dibbuks are souls banned from Gehenna because they committed sinful acts such as suicide. Dibbuks are said to take possession of human beings, although they are also able to enter inanimate objects. Dibbuks may have unfinished business on earth, and will take possession of a body to accomplish their goals. Not everyone can be possessed however, and so extra caution must be taken to guard against evil spirits. Some believe that ignoring religious practice or doubting Jewish tenets can allow one to be susceptible to possession. It even says in the Talmud that, Every observance of the law is a protection, so did 21a. One could be open to possession if one doubts the stories in the Old Testament, such as Moses crossing the Red Sea. It can take nine men and a rabbi to exorcise a dibbik. The rabbi, called a Baal Shem, must be a powerful rabbi. The rabbi and the men attempt to shock the dibbik out of the victim, and will recite prayers and blow the shofar, ram's horn. Once the demon has made itself present, the rabbi will attempt to heal it through dialogue and prayer. Dibbik possession has fallen out of favor in the larger Jewish community, but some Hasidic communities will still practice exorcisms when needed. There is a weird story going around today that the rapper Post Malone cursed himself by touching a box in a museum that supposedly contains a trapped Dibbik. The following is the opening scene from the Coen Brothers movie, A Serious Man, featuring a Dibbik. Possession has been understood by some academics and psychologists today as being akin to mental illness. It is easy to imagine someone suffering from psychosis being thought of as possessed. That is certainly one possible answer. Even today our way of understanding mental illness in the West is different from how other cultures understand it. Possession often happens to women, especially in many parts of the Islamic world. One explanation for this is that possession is one possible method for women to work within male-dominated systems, or what scholar Saba Mahmud has called feminist agency. Mahmud believes that in these situations, women can be agents within their social systems or structures as a means of creating stability and not change. What is clear is that dibbuks, demons, have not gone away. In some circles, spirit possession is more prevalent today than it has ever been. In some cases, possession narratives are powerful forms of therapy, and means of exercising power in the face of social oppression. In others, it is a reflection of popular media, and the popularity of cultural myths and stories. And in many cases, possession is a way of understanding evil in the world, and how a good God could allow for bad things to happen. Spirit possession stories say a lot about ourselves, our societies, and our relationships to the supernatural. They have evolved, and will continue to evolve rather than ever go away.